What's up wizards, I have a treat for you today. We are going to be focusing on 10 tips to make you a master of TypeScript generics. When you're done with this video, you will understand a whole lot more about generics and you'll be confident enough to use them in your code. If you don't know what generics are, if you don't know how to use them, then you are missing out. They give you the power to make abstractions, to make your code a lot more dry, to make sure that you're not needing any excess type annotations. TypeScript without generics would be absolutely awful. Even if you've never written one yourself, you've probably used thousands of them. So let's get going. Tip number one. We start here with what actually is a generic. Generics actually refer to a couple of different patterns. And the first pattern is here. We can take this my generic type and currently it's just got data as any. We can actually pass a type to it, we can declare that this type now, instead of just being a type, is actually a kind of type function that takes an argument. And now my generic type is actually going to be erroring and going to say generic type, my generic type requires one type argument. So we can actually pass an argument to it. We can say first name string, let's say, and now we can use this T data anywhere we want to inside this type declaration. So we can say data is T data. And now example one, you can see if we hover over it, we have have example one data first name string. So we can now use my generic type to basically represent a lot of different things if we want to. So we can have example two has data string. If we change this to a number, you end up with data number in there. So this pattern lets you create type helpers, type functions that you can create other types out of. That's what's called a generic type. Tip number two, you can create functions with a type helper kind of mapped over the top. Currently we have this make fetch function where we pass in a URL and we end up with basically the return type of this fetch, which is going to be any here because this returns any. So our result in here is typed as any. That's kind of annoying. What we'd really like to do is actually type it with what we get back. Let's say we get a first name string and a last name string back. Now our result is typed in the correct way, but it's not as cool as it could be. We're having to mash on this extra type annotation here. Surely there should be a way that we can do this kind of inside our function. Well, there is. We can make T data inside here. This little syntax basically maps on a type argument onto your function. Then we can declare the return type as promise T data because this is kind of it's returning a promise. This returns promise any. So now what we can do is we can move this declaration and actually pass this as a type argument to make fetch. So this syntax here, we're now passing two arguments. One of them is a runtime argument and one of them is a type argument up here. And this type argument tells res what it's supposed to be because this is what's getting typed in promise T data. So this is now a generic function and a generic function is just a normal function with a type helper mapped on top of it. Tip number three, there are actually way more generic functions in the language than you expect are gonna be there. For instance, we have this set kind of class here, which is built into JavaScript. And ideally we want this to just be a set of numbers. We can add a number here, but we can also add a string and we kind of want this to error on the type level. You notice that set is being inferred here as set unknown. And this little thing here should give you a clue as to what's needed. We can actually hover over set here where it's a set constructor and you can see these are being inferred as unknown. If we command click into it, we can see that set here it looks like a generic type is being mapped over. So we can actually pass in the argument that we want. Even though we're not passing any runtime arguments here, we can pass in a type argument. And now the only thing that we can pass to our set is a number. There are lots of parts of JavaScript where you're going to need to pass in these type arguments into generic functions that you weren't even aware of, especially if you're using something like React, then use state, use ref, use reducer, like a lot of the hooks and a lot of the other parts too, create context too, will all need you to pass in a type argument along with any runtime arguments. Tip number four. Here we have a function called add ID to object where what we're doing is we're passing in this kind of object here and we end up with a result which adds an ID to it. So it adds it kind of on the type level here and it adds it here too. I can actually remove this, I think, and TypeScript will just sort of still cleverly infer the result. But there's something ugly about what we're doing here, which is we're passing a type argument here, which looks like it has exactly the same structure as the runtime argument that we're passing. It would be really cool if one could like infer from the other. Well, it turns out that what we can do is actually remove this whole type annotation 
and everything still seems to work. That's because here we've got this T here, so we can actually change this to T obj if we want to, like the name actually doesn't matter. And then what's happening here is because we're not passing a type argument, then TypeScript is going to look in the runtime arguments to see if it can infer anything from it. If we hover over add ID to object, you can see that the type argument there is being inferred as first name string, last name string. So even though we've got this kind of slightly complicated generic signature up here, we can actually just use it without even thinking about passing a type argument or anything there, and we still get a really smart result, meaning that we get autocomplete.id right there. This is a central idea in understanding generics, understanding that they can actually infer the type arguments you pass them without actually needing to pass any type arguments. This is the source of a lot of the magic that you can do with generics. Tip number five. Here we're going back to the type world, leaving the functions for a minute. We have this get promise return type t equals awaited return type t. That's pretty confusing. So we have this awaited thing here. What it does is it basically takes something that you pass it and it's like you call a wait on it. So if we pass it a promise string inside there, then it's going to return us the string. If we pass it promise number instead, then it's going to return the number. Return type does the same thing, but it does it for functions. So we can pass it a function that returns a string and we'll get a string and a function that returns a number and we'll get a number. If you combine the two, you get a type helper that takes in a function that returns a promise, returns the return type of that, and then gets the awaited version of that. So in other words, result here is typed as whatever in this little box here. So first name, last name, if we add ID to it, then we're gonna get that inside our thing there too. But we've got an error here. The error looks like this. Type T does not satisfy the constraint args any to any. The reason this is erroring is because return type actually only allows you to pass certain things to it. So if I say type result to equals return type, and I'll pass it a string, then that's going to start yelling at me. That's because if we look at the declaration of return type here, then there's actually this little extends clause just next to the T. You can see here's the type argument, and here is a constraint on the type argument. What this constraint is saying is that we can only pass in basically any function into here, because getting the return type of a string doesn't make sense because strings can't be called, they don't have return types. So what we can do to make TypeScript happy here is we can actually actually say this t needs to extend the same thing as return type does. So what we finally get is that we can now only pass in functions into our get promise return type here. And it's saying that type string does not satisfy this constraint. If we wanted to constrain it to something else, we could say t extends string. And of course, this breaks everything because we can't, we now can only pass strings to it. Or we could say boolean or number or whatever. You can basically put any type in here. These constraints are really useful because they allow you to make sure that you're only getting certain things into your type helper. Or as we'll see in a second, only certain things pass to the type arguments of a function. Tip number six. This is is a really complicated one. We're looking at a function called get key with highest value. We pass in an object here and we're returning an object with the key, which is one of the keys of the object and a value of number. The idea here is if we pass in the like A, B, C with each with differing numbers, it's going to grab the max out of that and grab basically the result here too, which is going to be C. So our types actually look correct. We're doing a pretty good job here. We're getting key, which is A or B or C. And finally, we're grabbing the value here too, which is result.value, which is always going to be a number. But we have some errors inside the function. Object.keys, it looks like, like can only be passed in as, oh, it needs an extends thingy constraint. This means that we need to actually constrain this T object because you can't call object.keys on a number, you can't call it on a string. So we actually need to constrain it to be something that object.keys can handle. And we also know that the thing we want to pass in is an object where the keys are strings and the values are numbers. To do that, I can actually say extends a record with string and number. A record is a type helper that basically lets you gives you like an object where you have dynamic keys of strings and then you specify the value that you want there too. What this now means is when we call this function, we can't pass in a boolean to this anymore because this is not assignable to type number. In other words, we're still getting the inference from what we pass in here. We're still getting A, B, C number, 
but we're constrained by what we want to pass in. When you have a generic function, you're usually going to want to put a constraint on it. This gives you control over what the users of your function can pass in, and it usually means that inside your function you need to do less logic. Tip number seven. Here we have a typed object keys function. What this does is it basically takes in an object that we have here and then returns an array with the keys kind of like mapped into an array there. By default, object keys is actually returns an array of strings. And so this is actually incompatible with the return type that we've specified here. How do you get around this? Because TypeScript seems to think it should be one way and you think it should be another. In this case, you know better than TypeScript. So what you can do is you can actually do this. You can say as array key of t object. Now we get the same exact results, but TypeScript has stopped yelling at us. You might be looking at this and thinking, oh no, you shouldn't really use as. Like as is basically a way to assert that you know more than TypeScript. But in this case, it's actually what you need to do. Sometimes inside generic functions, you know better than TypeScript. TypeScript is going to lose its way in really complicated generic signatures. So a lot of libraries that use this type of syntax will slap on an as any just to make sure that the return type matches the thing that you're getting back. And this is absolutely fine to do inside a highly generic function. Tip number eight. Here we have a function called get value. And what this does is it takes in an object as its first parameter, and then a key as its second parameter, and then it's going to return the object key here. So when you have a problem like this, your first thought should be, what do I need to capture in the type arguments in order to do everything I need to do at the type level? It's pretty obvious we're going to need to capture this, right? We're going to need to grab the object that's being passed in because they could pass anything in. Let's grab that inside t obj here and stick it just there. So now if we look at get value, then we can see that the type argument is being inferred properly. Now this key here, we know that that it's going to need to be something that can index into t obj. So a good candidate here would be key of t obj. And this looks pretty good actually because we now get autocomplete on side a and b here. If we add another value to this, let's say c true, then we're going to get autocomplete there too. This is a great lesson in itself that you can have different parameters that each rely on the same generic. But this isn't quite good enough because the result isn't actually the thing that we're getting from the index. The result is actually a union of all of these types here. What that indicates to me is that C isn't being treated as C on the type level. It's actually being treated as A or B or C. And you can actually see that here, get value C or A or B, return string or number or boolean. We need to try and force it to be more specific here on the type level to actually infer what we pass into here and then use that to index into the object that we have on the type level as well. For this, we're going to need multiple generics. So we have our tobj here. We can actually add a second argument here where we can say tobj and tkey. And this key now, we can put it on here, but we now actually get an error because T key cannot be used to index type T obj. And we've lost all our nice autocomplete and we've lost our nice return type too. So we need to think, we actually need to constrain T key, but still infer it. For that, we can use a constraint. So we can say T key extends key of T obj here. And now what we get is we get this inference but it actually returns the proper type, whatever we pass in. So if we specify A, we get number. If we specify B, we get string. If we specify C, we get Boolean. This is extremely cool because you can get this inference happening between the arguments of your functions, which then maps onto the return type and lets you sort of propagate these types beautifully through your app. Ugh, generics are so cool. Tip number nine. Let's go back to basics a little bit. We have a function called create set where we're taking in a dynamic t, but this isn't referenced in our type arguments anywhere. So it's not going to be like inferred from anything. This means that in order to get something sensible back from it, we basically have to call create set passing that number into there, which then gets passed to our set there. So we end up with set number. But we have this create set down here, which is unknown because we haven't actually passed it anything inside this slot. But I've got a requirement, which is I would actually like this to be a set string. And we can do that by actually specifying it as a default parameter. So just like you can have default parameters in JavaScript, you can have default type parameters in TypeScript. So here this T, if we don't pass anything, is 
going to default to a string, which we can see down here because set is now inferred as string. But if we do pass something to it, then it overrides it and puts it in its place. Tip number 10. One of the most powerful things you can do in TypeScript is use generics to link up amazing inference from external libraries. In this function, we're, we've got a function called make zod say fetch, which will give you a clue as to where we're going. We have a t data parameter here, which we're using to pass a type argument to. And then we're getting back this result here, first name and last name. But you notice this isn't actually safe at runtime. We're just sort of saying that this is what's gonna get returned. Wouldn't it be great if we could use a schema definition library to make sure what's coming back is what we think is coming back and have that automatically inferred. Wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't it be great? For this, we're actually going to use Zod. We're going to import from Zod and Zod just has a single import Z. Then we're going to pass a schema into our function here. And for now, this is just gonna be z.schema. So now this is forcing us to add z dot whatever into here. And let's say we just want first name, which is z.string and then last name, which is z.string. And inside the function, we're then going to say then the result that comes back from res.json, we're then going to return schema.pass that result. So at the runtime, what this is going to do is fetch from our URL, then call res.json on it, then take that passed result and actually run it through our schema parser, whatever we pass in here. So we know that what we're getting back is going to be first name and last name. But the issue is we've still got this weird kind of like doubling up here where we've got the type argument there and then we've got this z.object being passed in there. Wouldn't it be great if one could infer from the other? Well, it turns out this z.schema actually has a couple of type arguments that you can pass to it. And the one that we care about is t data there. This means that if I add something to this, for instance, then this is going to start erroring because I need to add id z dot string onto here. And what it also means crucially is that I can delete this type argument and result will still be inferred as the right thing. And not only is this safe on the type level, it's also safe on the runtime level too. And we've managed to make this really nice type safe function without any type parameters actually here. So you can see that if you concentrate your types, your advanced TypeScript in one place, it means that the users of your function don't really need to worry about it at all. There we go, folks, TypeScript generics, like what a mind blowing feature of this amazing language. You can learn more about generics by leaving a like on this channel. That's right, pressing that like button will actually inject your brain with a kind of surge of dopamine, which, you know, we'll inject some generics in there somehow. Just click the like button. And you should check out totaltypescript.com, which is my course for working with advanced TypeScript. It's got an entire module, which is about the length of a five hour workshop entirely dedicated to generics. Thank you so much for following along. You can actually look at one of my other videos here. You can subscribe, see what more stuff we've got on the channel. And I can't wait to show you even more TypeScript stuff. I'm going to be focusing on the real core stuff to do with TypeScript to make you a better TypeScript developer and to lead you through the forest of advanced TypeScript that's out there. Thank you very much, and I'll see you very soon.